How did you wind up in WCW? Um, became partners in World Gym. Um, worked out an understanding with my other two partners that I wasn't going back to wrestling. So we signed a little deal. We took this gym that was going under and uh, brought it back to life. And then when, you know, I was up and running, right. just, you know, making money. So I said to, uh, I was watching TV and I had flipped through the channels and, and wrestling was on. And I saw some jabronis wrestling and I went, that's where I belong. You know, fuck the gym, that's where I belong. So I called WCW and, um, what was her name, Ingle? Yes, yeah. the lawyer girl. Left a message with her. And uh, then I think I called, I may have called one more time. And then I got a call back and they said, uh, we want to bring you in. I said, okay, great. And they said, uh, we want to make you a horseman. I said, okay, great. And they're like, and this is what we're going to pay you. And I said, okay, great. No, I don't think you understand. We're going to bring you in as a horseman. And this is what we're going to pay you. And I'm like, okay. Right. And they're like, you're okay with that? And I'm like, man, I'm good with it. Uh, okay, well, all right. Well, we'll send you like all the information. We'll contact you. We'll send you a ticket, get you down here, you know, the whole shebang. Okay. You know, I mean, in their mind, they were sticking me, you know, cheap, cheap. Right. In my mind, I knew where I, well, I believe I knew where it was going. And I was absolutely right. So, again, they brought me in and the rest is written in stone. What were your initial impressions about Eric Bischoff? Um, nice guy looking to make his the business thrive you know compete with Vince um, unsure of what he was doing and not sharp really sharp about the business more of a mark than you know of an educated you know guy right a lot of people say that, uh, you know, obviously Hogan was in his ear and, and Hogan was the real one running the company. Would you agree with that? Hogan was only in his ear. Hogan came in after me. And Bischoff had said, I'm thinking about bringing Hogan in. And I said, I think that's a bad move. Oh, no, he could really make the business. I said, I'm just telling you, I'm giving you my opinion. It's a bad move. So, yes, Hogan ran the business for Bischoff. Right. Okay. Were you nervous at all? Oh, wait. And Flair. Flair was the key master, and, you know, and Hogan, you know, held one of the keys. Right. Were you nervous about becoming one of the horsemen, obviously? But you didn't really follow the business, so you didn't really know their... Well, no, no. I, I didn't I didn't know. I, heard, I knew of them. Right. You know, people talked about them. Um, should I have done my homework? Yeah, probably. See what they're all about. But, you know, I think... I don't think it went over really big in, in Georgia, you know, Mid-South, because I came from the WWF. Um, I wasn't a, you know, top card or bottom card, however you want to say it. And, um, but they wanted somebody that, as they put it to me, looked great and could put women in their seats. That's what they wanted. So they brought me in. I didn't know... that the horsemen were these kind of like badasses. You know what I mean? Right. So, you know, it took me a little bit once I started working with them in the ring. You know, hey, Flair would say to me, hey, we don't do things like that. Okay. You know, maybe you should pull me aside and tell me we do A, you know, A through E and we don't do the rest of this shit, you know? That may have helped a little bit in the beginning. What were some of the things you were doing wrong? You know, trying to get my partner up, you know, like, you know, come on, man, come on. You know, we don't do that. You could bang on the uh, turnbuckle. Okay? I get it. And the horsemen wore baby faces at the time, too. So. Yeah, they wore baby faces. Right. So did uh, Ric Flair and Arn Anderson welcome you as, you know, a nice addition? Or behind the scenes were like, why did you put us with Paul? I could tell you what I think I know. 
I think in the beginning they were not happy with it because, you know, I spoke to Oli and uh, Oli sat me down. He's like, listen, he goes, I don't know anything about you. People say you could work. I don't know. I've never seen you. So I'm sitting there going, okay, like, okay. Like, you don't, you know, you don't go get a fucking running back if you don't know how he fucking runs. You know what I mean? So either you're jerking my dick or you're a fucking idiot because you didn't do your homework. You don't bring somebody in like that, you know. Um, you know, but, you know, this one tells me this and, and, you know, but I don't know. And they, you know, they said that, you know, uh, you know, you're a good looking guy and we're trying to put women in our seats, but, you know, that's their opinion. You know, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, when it come to Flair, his intro for me was just off the chain. It was just phenomenal, you know. I think everything was okay until I started showing up at places where he was. He took his girls? Let's just say I, I took some of his shine away. You know, um, he had, you know, he had the woo. I didn't need to woo, you know what I mean? They wooed for me. It's what it is, you know, it's how it was. I didn't have to get on a table and dance and everybody look at me. I just walked in the fucking room and, and commanded attention. It's just the way that it was. It was my presence. It's what I, you know, how I carried myself. So, do I think he started to get jealous? Yeah, I think he started to get jealous. You know, all of a sudden they're putting me and Orndorff together, and they switched me on Arn that fast. Did me and Arn, you know, look good together? Hell no, we didn't look good together. You know, we had two different bodies, not even remotely close. Now me and Orndorff complimented one another. You know what I mean? Right. We had the bodies. I get it. So, what was Rip like outside the ring? You've been pretty open about your feelings on his lifestyle. I like to have a good time. Now, were you aware of all the smart marks or the internet fans, you know, saying, "Oh, you know, Paul Rome is a horseman. It's a joke. It's it's the worst idea at all." Or did you pretty much not know what was going on and the sheets and? I didn't. I didn't really know what was going on until, fuck, maybe after I wasn't a horseman. I think mean, that's really when I started to hear that, um, you know, people saying, hey, you know, this, that, and the other thing, and I'm like, who gives a fuck what they're saying? Right, as long as you're getting a payday. And <laughs> well, they, yeah, but it ain't even so much that, you know? I mean, listen, you want your fans, you want people to like you. Right. You know, because you gave them something. I gave for X amount of years what Paul Roma gives every time he steps in that ring. That's what I gave him. Now, you may not agree with me. It may, it may make you feel better about yourself to knock me, and that's fine. Whatever gets you up the next day and gets you through that day, that's fine. I know one thing. I've run it, whether they're full of shit or not, I've run into enough people, and I, don't, I hate to say the word fans, but I have ran into enough people that have paid me enough compliments to know that my job was done. 